Have you wished there was a way to search and replace all within your Power Apps? Or maybe you're looking for a way that you can work on a Power App at the same time with your colleagues. Perhaps you're a developer wishing for the days that you can share your Power Apps and have those in source code. Well, thanks to some new functionality, that's now possible. Hey makers, April Dunham here. In this video, I'm going to walk you through some brand new functionality that enables us to get the source code for our Canvas Power Apps. I'll go into more detail about what this is, what it means for you, and how to use it after this. The first thing we need to do to get started is make sure that we have .NET Core 3.1 installed on our machine. So in the blog article, they actually have links to download that. So if we click on that and open it up in a new tab here, we'll see different installers depending on what operating system you're using. So just select the correct installer and get that downloaded. It'll go through a quick setup process here, and then we can move on to the next step of installing that new tool. To get the tool, we need to go to the GitHub repo, which I'll open up in a new tab. And of course, I'll put a link to that here in the video notes. So we're going to need to clone this repo. And if you're not familiar with GitHub, that just means we need to make a copy of this repo on our desktop so that we can use it. There are a few ways that we can do this. What you wanna do is click this code button here. So we can either copy that URL and use something like Git. We can use the GitHub command line interface and use this command that we're seeing here. Or we can actually just download this zip file to our desktop or my preferred method, which is using GitHub Desktop. So for GitHub Desktop, what we'll wanna do is click this code button and copy that HTTPS URL here. And over on GitHub Desktop, we'll click File and Clone Repository. Then we'll select the URL option and we can paste in that URL that we just copied from the repo. Just choose the path on your machine that you want this repo to be cloned to and click Clone. So now that we've got this cloned, we can click Show in Explorer and that will take us directly to the location where it just dumped all of this code. So what we'll wanna do here is find the build.cmd file, which is a Windows command file in this directory, and double click that to run it. So this is going to start the install process for us. And now what that just did, if we go to the bin folder within this directory and debug and go into this PA SOPA folder, we'll see that that command we ran created this executable file for us. Now that we have everything we need installed, let's walk through how we can take an existing Canvas app and Power Apps, use this new tool to unpack everything into editable source files, see how we can make some changes in Visual Studio Code, and how we can get this checked into source control. So to do this, let's jump over to Power Apps at make.powerapps.com, and let's take a look at this conference scheduler app that I have. So what we'll wanna do is we wanna open this up in edit mode in the Power App Studio. And what we wanna do is save this as an MS app file extension on our computer. So to do that, we'll select the file tab, save as, and instead of the cloud, we'll select this computer and then download. So I'll just select this and go to show in folder so I can see where it dumped that file out to. All right, now that we have our MS app file downloaded, all we need to do is open up command prompt so we'll click on our start menu here, search for command, press enter. And first we need to navigate to the directory where we downloaded this new Power Apps pack unpack tooling. So I have it over here. You wanna make sure that you're going into the bin in the debug and the PA SOPA folder, cause that's where that executable is. So we'll copy this whole path. And in command prompt, we'll do a CD so we can change directory paste that in, press enter. So we're gonna type a command in here that will unpack our MS app file, but first we need to know where we have our MS app file stored so that we can point it to the right location. So I'll go back here into my file explorer and I'll copy this path to my downloads folder because that's where I have that MS app file in. And the command that we wanna run is right here actually in this documentation. So I'll do a P-A-S-O-P-A -A, space hyphen unpack and this is where we need the directory where we store that MS app file. So I'll paste in that directory and we need to add the name of the MS app file, which in my case was conference scheduler dot MS app. Then we'll give it the location where you want to have it output these source files to. So for that, I've created this folder. So I'll copy this, paste that in and press enter. 
So now it's the moment of truth. If this ran correctly, then that folder we specified earlier should be populated with all of our source files. And there you go, there it is. We have all of our source files outputted here. So now let's look at how we can actually interact and make some changes in these source files. So we'll dive in here in the source folder. And you see that we have different YAML files for all of our screens that we have in the app. So if we wanna make a change to that landing screen, which to remind ourselves looks like this, we can right click on that YAML file and click open with Visual Studio Code or the editor of your choice. So now we have complete access to all of the code here on this landing screen. It's pretty cool to see how this all translates behind the scenes. So take that find and replace scenario that I mentioned earlier. Even if you're not really wanting to leverage source code for Power Apps, this alone is worth its weight for this tool. Since we have this open up in Visual Studio Code, we can just do a Control H to open up the find and replace window. So if I knew I needed to change any reference to Power PowerPlatcon 21 and maybe update it to a new conference name, I can just type in Power PowerPlatcon 21, put in my replacement text. You can see that I found one item here, click replace all, and now my app's updated. That's all great, but what if you do want to use GitHub to put your Power Apps source files in source control? Well, thankfully that's really easy since we already have all of our files unpacked here. We can just go to GitHub desktop or you can use command line if that's your preference. But we'll go to file and add local repository in GitHub desktop. And we'll just navigate to the folder that we dumped all of our unpacked files in. So click select folder, and it's going to give us a message that the repository that we have here isn't a Git repository, so we can add one and associate that with it. So we'll just click Create Repository. We can give it a name, and we can specify a description, and click Create Repo. Now what that changed, if we go open up that folder again, it just added the GitHub elements that we need to be able to publish this out to GitHub. So now all that's left is to publish this repo by clicking the Publish button. You'll have one last chance to change the name or the description, and we'll click Publish again. And that's all there is to it. So let's click View on GitHub here to open up GitHub in our browser, and we'll see our brand new GitHub repo with all of our conference scheduler Power App source files. Now that all of our Power App source files are here in this GitHub repo, we can take full advantage of everything that GitHub has to offer. If you needed to, you can even make changes directly here in the repo by going to the source folder, clicking on the file that you want to make a change to, and editing it here all in line. So now the last thing to show is how can we take these source files that are either on GitHub or our computer that we've edited and package them back up so that we can deploy those into our environment. To handle that, we'll go back to our command prompt. We'll type P-A-S-O-P-A -S -S again, and we'll do a space hyphen, and instead of unpack, we'll do a pack this time. This is going to create a new MS app file for us, so we can give that file a name here. So I'll call this conference scheduler v2.ms app. Then we just need to specify where our source code is located. So I'll copy the path here, paste that into the command prompt, and press enter. So we can see our MS app file here. All that's left is to go back into make.powerapps.com, go into a Power App. We'll click the File tab in an existing Power App that we have open. Select Open. Browse so we can browse on our computer here. Go to the path where our new MS app file was outputted and click Open. So if you recall earlier in Visual Studio Code, I took the source file for this landing page and I changed the header here from PowerPlatConf21 to Power Platform Conference 2021. So we can see that that change did in fact get carried over here into the repackaged application. I hope I've given you a good overview of this new functionality. It's really powerful and I've just began to scratch the surface of what you can do with this. This is still experimental and it's open source, so if you do find anything buggy or any issues with it, make sure to use the issues on the GitHub repo for this tooling so that they can address those. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, share, and I'll catch you in the next video.